to Centre Stage. I'm joined with uh, Jennifer Caldwell. Uh, how are you today, Jen? I am very well, thank you. Yes. How are you? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, yes. you have a good New Year, first of all. I think we're it still in that period good. where we can ask, can't we? <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, it, it was lovely, actually. It was very calm. Um, <laughs> it was very calm. It was necessary. We only had, we did a show on New Year's Eve and then we had New Year's Day off. So wow. then we were back in on the second. So we needed a little... A little reset, so it was quite calm. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. It's yeah. a very, very busy time. <laughs> Fantastic Great Women Who Changed the World is all about mm. these these massive characters, these women who literally did change the world over over the time of history. Um, yeah. And it's based on the award-winning picture book by Kate Pankhurst. So how how did you adapt to this to that role, the roles you play within mm -hmm. the, the, the the musical? Um, and how does it adapt well to the book? Um, um it's so in terms of the book the book is literally it's gorgeous and it's illustrated and it's beautiful and so like easy to follow mm. um which I think has translated to the stage in terms of like the bright colors like the entire set is just like a just a blow up of the, all of these wonderful colors and it's so vivid mm. and in terms of the characters we we did I did so I know I did even when I was in auditions I did so much research <laughs> on them because I play Emmeline Pankhurst and Agent Fifi and Emmeline Pankhurst is the um, the more well known of the two characters that I play um, and I did a little bit of research on Emmeline in auditions but Agent Fifi I was so intrigued because I was like who is this woman and yeah. I like I, I feel like it's al allowing us to take those women off the page and show people who they are because uh, they're not they're not as well known as Emmeline Pankhurst or Frida no. Kahlo or or you know um Jane Austen or, yeah. or Rosa Parks you know they're they're like the four there's there's four of four of us and Jade our protagonist um and they're like the four ones that are really really well known and then there are others that like allow allowing us to take those from the books and and show people those characters it's just i love it so much yeah it's, important. it's, it's steeped in history isn't it really and and they oh, all yeah. did wonderful things to to change how women are perceived within the world and within the uk and across you know the globe really mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. you feel a pressure in your role playing emmeline to deliver that it's based on the book that is an ancestor of Emmeline in Kate. Is that, do you yes. feel the pressure? <laughs> yes. <laughs> because especially at the moment, we I mean, all for the whole of the Christmas period, bro, so from the the third, no, 5th of December, um, we have been in Salford at the Lowry. We've been mm. in Manchester, which is Emmeline Pankhurst was from Manchester. That's right, yeah. Moss Side, wasn't she? Yeah. Yeah. She was born in Moss Side, yeah. But um which I can imagine is probably very different to, to the way it is now, but yeah. oh, yes. <laughs> she, um, it, like, I, I, I feel like I have to, I do her justice, you know? Yeah. I have to like portray her in a really honor, honor, honoring way, but you know, still, still truthfully, she was, she was a really strong, really um, no nonsense woman mm. by by the sounds of of the research that i've done yeah, a know. true mancunian for sure <laughs> oh thank you i'll yeah. take that i am also a mancunian yeah so snap. Like, yeah. i'm from manchester as well originally no way whereabouts um so i was born in oldham um stop it i'm in staley bridge literally right now oh staley vegas yeah did you get hit by the tornado <laughs> <laughs> it was really close it was oh, no. really close to here I yeah know. so so i lived I, I was um yeah born in oldham lived in middleton but then moved then my mum and dad moved over to Broadbottom, just outside glossop oh my god i grew up in hadfield oh no way <laughs> yeah Stop my best mate now. was from hadfield yeah oh my god i love this <laughs> anyway <laughs> yeah anyway wait, we wait, digress about but that's where i grew up and went to school no, oh, no way. way which school did you go to philip howard oh, oh well, philip howard yes <laughs> why, why don't give me that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I finished my now. school in uh, Longendale did you yeah okay, so uh, okay. anyway anyway move on and very quickly <laughs> um so uh so yeah so, so we've talked about the iconic women throughout the history that the mm -hmm. show features but how does the production celebrate that strength and impact of these women and in a way that resonates with the audience because as you know you said yourself you had to do a little bit of research as well on some of the lesser known mm -hmm. characters so yeah. how do you get them stories across 
to people in the audience who, again, may not know who these the are? Oh. I think it's done in a really wonderful way. It's everything that we do is done through our protagonist, Jade. So Jade, the the, the premise is that Jade is this 11 year old girl mm. who goes on a museum trip with her. It's very, there's something quite nice at the museum about it. So she goes on a, on a museum trip with her, um, with her school, um, and I also play one of the the teachers, one of Jade's teachers, which like ties in everything right. at the end. But she gets kind of forgotten about and left behind. Um, so she stumbles across this this oh, this exhibition that's about to open called the Gallery of Greatness, and it's filled with all these wonderful women. So Jade is having Jade is going through a kind of difficult time, a transitional time in those kind of formative years. Mm. So she's trying to navigate who she is and by these women telling their stories that allows her to help navigate the world and you know kind of find out who she is and find out that she, everyone has a place in the world yeah. so telling those lesser known stories it's done in a really fun way but it's also done to help the character arc of jade as well yeah, and 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 looking at the production, I, I I was sent some of the production images. Um, I mm -hmm. think it was from the from the Lowry actually, um, and it looks incredible. The the the, the set, the the costume design, even just the the color. And I'm I'm a sucker for neon, and it it just looks like that's steeped <laughs> in, in all that. So it is. that that must help <laughs> with the production, bring it to life as well. A hundred percent. The lighting does so much because the set is it's quite busy. Mm. There's a lot a lot of boxes. But actually, it's relatively sparse. But these boxes are so multifunctional, and like we get, like they can open. We get things out. People come out of them. There are like these little tunnels, and wow. the band, our wonderful band, are sat on top of the of the set as well. And they're in these neon boxes, and they light up. And the lighting states change for every every kind of character or world that we're in. And it's you know it changes what is just a blanket set it changes with all the wonderful lighting that we have as well. It, and it's like, I, I'm really sad because I can't see it from out of front, um, <laughs> but apparently it looks great <laughs> with the lighting and stuff. The photos look great. And I was like, oh, is that what it looks like? Yeah, I can imagine. Can't just, see it. You just sat there in wonder going, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I can't believe Yeah, I would be. It. I'd be like a giant child, like mouth open. Yeah. Yeah. And very flamboyant in the setting. I mean, it, it, it just oozes Kenny Wax, doesn't it, in terms of the production and and and, and the the six vibe. So I know that you also starred in six. So and a lot of yeah. people are actually dubbing this as kind of the little sister of six, the musical, because <laughs> you know, the musical production and all that kind of stuff. So um yeah. it, it must be um different, you know, how does that roll different from say when you played um I think it was Anne Boleyn, wasn't it, in six? I, yeah, I was how does how does the role differ? You know, is it is it much because she's an it's, iconic historic historic character in herself, isn't she? Is. <laughs> she absolutely <laughs> is. Yeah, I was I was lucky enough on six to be able to because I started off as an alternate, so mm. I got to play all six of the queens, which is I think is more reflective of what I do or what we all do in Fantastic Great Women because we're all multi rolling and doing all of these different things, and I think. With six, um, you have your one costume, your one character, you know, in, in the in the confines of the show, you have your one costume, your one mm. character, and you have that arc and tell those stories. But with fantastic fantastically great women, you we all get to be different people. So there's that there's that extra excitement and extra kind of challenge of that. And I feel like with with this show in particular, we are um, teaching. I mean, with six, you are teaching, but I feel like, like I said before, there are the these characters, everyone knows the six wives of Henry VIII, mm -hmm. yes. you know? But with these characters, a lot of people don't know who Mary Anning is. A lot of people don't know who Agent Fifi is. A lot yeah. of people don't know who Sacagawea is, mm -hmm. you know? So it's, it's, it, it's different in the way in which we are introducing these characters into people's lives in order to hopefully inspire and bring that kind of empowerment in that yeah. sense, in that educational sense. 
Absolutely. And uh, we talked about the the different characters you're playing. Um, mm. So from an acting perspective, how do you approach the different characters within the show? Because for me, I mean, I did an amateur production and I was I was struggling with one character, let alone, <laughs> yeah. you know, and the two characters I was tussling with was Colin himself and, and the actual <laughs> character I was meant to be playing, which right. was kind of like Elvis doing beauty school dropout in Greece. It was kind of weird. It was a school production. But I, I helped with that. Um, but so how do you move from Emmeline to Agent Fifi to Miss Johnson? And how do you kind of approach that in planes with, and again, with such distinct personalities as well? I think how distinct the personalities are make it a little easier because you you go, okay, I have to do a complete switch around. If there were similarities, it might be easier to slip, but there's so different they are wildly different that you just go okay well I'm gonna access that part of my personality or I'm gonna access that part of my personality mm. um but I think what also really helps is the costume design because as soon as I put my Emmeline Pankhurst costume on I feel like an absolute boss right because it, it's very <laughs> It's like old school kind of military. It's got this wonderful purple jacket with this silver accents on it. And nice. it's like, it's in, it's incredible. And as soon mm. as I put it on, I feel like just so strong and so broad. It changes my entire body language, which really helps. And with Fifi, I've got like a really little cute beret and some little <laughs> glasses. And it just makes me feel like, so you can really kind of just feel the character it just helps literally you, through the costume. Yeah, it helps you embody it for sure. I always think like I have a thing in, in rehearsals. I want to always get the shoes on if I can. Ah, oh, right. Okay. Because shoes are really important. They change the way that you move. They change the way that yes, you walk. Course, they change yeah. where you put your weight. So that's that's really helpful. But I think the characters are written so differently that it is like you just have to complete and they're so they're so kind of big mm. all the characters are big characters so you just have to immerse yourself in it and throw yourself at it and i think you can't be shy with it you know yeah no absolutely and you seem so passionate <laughs> about it as well so excited for, for oh. what, what, what is... <laughs> sorry that was my siri kicking oh that's off. okay <laughs> sorry. Um, so, um, so we talked about the empowerment um, that these women bring to the stage yes. and, and to the world and, and to life and, and the inspirational nature of the show. But what message do you hope audiences will take away from watching Fantastically Great Women Who Change the World? What I hope people take away from it is that, and I think this is the overriding message of the show, is that everyone has the power to change the world. Whatever mm. in whatever way it might be, however big, however small, everyone has the power to change something about the world and or to change someone else's world, you know? And I think if you walk away from the show feeling strong and feeling like, yeah, I'm going to make a difference in some way, then we've all done our jobs. That's a great message to give, especially in the, the world we're living in in the moment. We we definitely need some kind of change and positivity, don't we? And hopefully Absolutely. the show will bring it. So, um, Jen, just to finish, I always ask my guests um, <laughs> on the show. Um, from the show itself, what is your favourite musical number? Hmm, my favourite musical number is probably Rose's Lullaby. Okay. Just, it's the only the only ballad in the show. Everything mm -hmm. is super upbeat and super, you know. But this it this moment, the moment that Jade has with Rosa Parks, it's like it's near the conclusion of the show. It's at a really kind of heightened point, and it's a. I watched it in rehearsals for the first time. We sat at the front of the rehearsal room because it, not none of us are in it, and uh, we sat there and watched it, and we all just sobbed because it's just it's so beautiful and really poignant and you know it's about your like having good positive dreams 
that can help change the world. And it's just, it's gorgeous. I love it so much. <laughs> you can't beat a good ballad or can you? This would be the really I know. And Leah, our Rosa Parks Leah is, her voice is just beautiful and she acts it beautifully. And it just makes me want to just give her a cuddle. You, know? you must have some fun during rehearsals and, <laughs> and, and the show itself then with the rest of the cast. It seems like you are quite tight and, and quite friendly. Yeah, as I a, mean, in company. the... Yeah, it's amazing. It's so because we're so small. There's five of us on stage at any one time, and we've got two amazing swings as well. So in mm. terms of the cast, there's only seven and wow. our three band. So it's um on and on stage company is, is is really small, and our backstage company isn't huge either. So we are all we're all really close, and we all we all luckily get on really really well, <laughs> which is nice. And we do like always to, a positive. <laughs> We do like to be a bit silly sometimes, but uh, only in a very professional way, of course. <laughs> of course. I, I'm sure there's no pranks <laughs> or anything like that going on. No, <laughs> never. <laughs> Fantastic. And lastly as well, um, just um, again, so we talked about your favourite musical number from the show. What is your favourite musical number ever? What is your kind of goal? Then that's a really tough question. I, I always like to think, because I'll pop it into the end of our interview. <laughs> that is a really tough question. Musically... I've, I've got two. Okay. Can I have two? Am I yes, allowed go to? on. Why not? Okay. <laughs> Musically, Old Red Hills of Home from Parade. Okay. Because nice. it's just the music and the chord progressions, and they're just so meaty, and I mm. love it. And like the choral bit at the end, and all the music cuts out, and it's just the vocals, and it's, I think it's perfect. <laughs> I think it's just, I think it's perfect. Um, But in terms of like something that means that, something to me, and something that I, I would watch and just beam is uh, Good Morning from Singing in the Rain. Oh, yes. yeah, It's my favourite musical of all time. <laughs> oh, wow, fantastic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Lovely. Jen, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. I won't take too much of your time. I know you're mega busy at the moment. Uh, we can't yeah. wait to see you when you come to Wales. Um, the <gasps> fantastic great women who changed the world come to the Wales Millennium Centre on the 17th of January. Um, yeah. which I'm super looking forward to. Can't wait to come and see it on press night, which... Uh, oh, you coming? Been... I'm so yeah, excited. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully we'll we'll be there. And um, yeah, I'm debating whether to bring my wife or bring my um, 11, uh, 10-year-old daughter. So I might bring my 10-year-old daughter. She might get... I, I think it's important for every young girl to see this show. I'm like, bring them all. <laughs> yes, no, absolutely. <laughs> uh, but all the best. Um, and um, I hope it all goes well for you. And I can't wait to see you on stage. Jen Caldwell, thank you so much for joining me on Centre Stage. Thank you.